for today's class, we are going to um, study disability studies. Okay. Um, so, without further ado, okay, I want to uh, start this session on disability studies. Now, um, disability studies is also called critical disability studies. When it's critical disability studies, is a study of um, disabled people. Okay, how they have started a movement on uh, disability. They have grouped themselves together and started a movement. And from there, we have um, people who study disabled people. Uh, in literary texts and study how society treats them. Now, why why did uh, this critic this disabled people started a movement? Okay, so the main aim of CDS or critical disability studies is to deconstruct ideas about disability and to explore how they have come to dominate our approaches to the subject and how the ideologies that surround disability have been constructed. So, according to the critical disability study, uh, disability itself is a construction of society. A society that constructs disability. Okay, while it's true that disability is uh, a physic exists in a physical sense. Okay, because some people are blind, some people are um, what do you call that deaf. Uh, some are mentally impaired, some are, have mental problems, okay, these are considered also disability. Um, some are, what else, uh, they have some problems with their eyesight, yeah, and so on. So, uh, but this, this the disabled movement, okay, um, say that they are not only physically disabled, they are more than that, you know, they are being treated as being um, sub, sub important or, or, or not so important uh, members of society. They are being oppressed by the uh, normal people. Okay, so they say that they are being oppressed because they have been constructed as being inferior to the normal people. So um, they want to change this, they want to deconstruct this idea of disability. So they're saying that it's also a social construct, not just a physical one, but more importantly, a social one. Okay. So CDS as critical disability studies seeks to deconstruct the binary distinction that it claims are used to create differences and hierarchies and obscure connection between disabled and non-disabled people. Because they say that um, you know there should not be any binary opposition between able versus disabled. Okay. Remember when we did the binary oppositions? Now we normally talk about male versus female, um, Western versus non-Western, or uh, white versus colored. Okay. But in this uh, theory, we have uh, able versus disabled, and disabled is uh, relegated to the inferior um realm okay so they become uh, inferior to the able people so they want to deconstruct this uh, it can also be a hierarchy you know able people up at the top and disabled at the bottom and they want to show the connection yeah they, they don't want to obscure make big vague make unclear the connection they want to show the connection between able people and disabled people that they are the same okay they can be the same so the theory relates to a specific group, disabled people which make up 50% of the world population. The theory appeared in the late 20th century from the success gained by the disability movement. Seminal works are obtained from works by Irving Goffman and Michael Foucault and the flourishing of other identity-based approaches with emphasis on rights. Okay, feminism, we have race. Huh? I was talking about... Um, non-Western versus Western, right? feminism, male versus female. So this is, uh, disabled study is one of the um, 
what do you call that one of the movements that is caused by the fight for equal equality okay Starting from 1960s, disabled activists argued that were a group and disabled people were denied rights. For example, in 1977, around 150 people with a range of impairments argued that they were denied rights and took over a floor of a federal building in San Francisco for 26 days to protest against the government's failure to implement Section 504 of the 1973 Rehabilitation Act which is America's first disability civil rights law. Okay, so uh, in the 1960s, it started with a movement, and um, in 1977, they were, had a huge strike. You know, um, they took over a floor, a whole floor of the federal building in San Francisco for 26 days, almost a month, to protest, huh? and. Um, they wanted to uh, the government to implement Section 504 of the 1973 Rehabilitation Act. Yeah. So, leader Ed Roberts called disabled people one of the largest minority groups in the nation, stressing their shared identity. So, disabled uh, groups, yeah, uh, disabled people, disabled movement is comprised of many people with many disabilities, so not just one. This attributed to a list of legislative victories, particularly the landmark Americans with Disabilities Act in uh, 1990. So this um, effort yeah, to empower disabled people to fight for their rights um, actually uh, produced the American Acts with Disabilities, Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 so greater rights that hence you know nowadays when you look at uh, buildings uh, we we can see the ramps leading to uh, a building huh? so this is one of the requirements for building uh, any type of building in America you have to have cases where disabled people uh, can have access to the same amenities the same buildings as disabled people do okay so, uh, one of the influential scholars that have uh, given a background to critical disability studies is Irving Goffman, who wrote Stigma in 1963, who analyzed social interactions among people, including those with abominations of the body, who differed from the expected norm. Okay. So, abominations of the body, and anyone who had abominations of the body is considered disabled. You know, maybe you, even if you can hear, if you can uh, see, uh, so on. Yeah, if your your face is somewhat um, disfigured or something like that, you, know, you are considered as uh, disabled. When he discusses passing and other strategies used by stigmatized people who desire acceptance, Goffman pointed out that the significance of disability is socially formed and can vary by time and place. So. Um, Goffman also pointed out that some disabled people they can they like to pass because of the stigma in society against disabled people. You know, whenever people see uh, a deaf person or a, a, a blind person, uh, sometimes they don't want to help. They even laugh at this deaf and blind person. They don't really care about them. Yeah? So this is how society sometimes react to people who have disabilities. So people who have disabilities like um, for example, they cannot hear, yeah. They but they can read lips. You know? They prefer to not tell others that they, they are deaf because they, they don't want to be stigmatized. Okay, or people who are partially blind. Some people are partially blind. You know? they, they're not blind in both eyes. They're blind in one eye. But sometimes they will um, not tell people that they cannot see in one eye. You know? So uh, they will try to pass off as being cited. Yeah. He pointed out that stigmatized people can internalize instead of oppose societal standards by which they are deemed inferior. So they can internalize it. They they you know they feel that they are inferior. They don't want to but when people uh, create uh, I'm sorry, when, when people treat disabled people as being inferior, sometimes disabled people also uh, can internalize they feel that they are inferior because they are being treated like that by society. Yeah. So uh, another person who gave uh, a theoretical background to the disability studies is Marco Foucault, who wrote The History of Sexuality. 
uh, he studied primarily mad people. And um, he stated that by the 19th century, bodies seen as problems were sequestered, controlled, diagnosed, and otherwise socially managed. So mad people, madness is also a form of disability. And uh, because people who are mad cannot fully function as normal individuals, so they are disabled. Um, so he stated in this book that Normally, they were put in uh, asylums, mad people, eh, because society wants to control them, yeah? wants to keep them apart from other people. So, Foucault's insight into madness, docile bodies, and the clinical gaze proved fertile grounds for later disability scholars. So, what disability critics do in disability studies? It approaches disability as a social and political phenomenon. It points out that since disability cannot be viewed, it is more than just a medical problem located in a person's body. In other words, we are saying that it is socially constructed. Now, it points out that since, that since disability, not, not all disability actually can, can be viewed. Uh, certain disabilities, like what I said, if you are partially blind, if you are deaf sometimes, um, you can be treated. Um, you know, you can be treated uh, in a different way okay, by society. So they are saying that disability is socially constructed because they are these people, disabled people, are being treated differently from normal people. So the medical model imbues disability with negative connotations through stigmatizing disabled people as damaged, inferior, and in need of rehabilitation or a cure. Okay, so they view them as damaged, inferior in need of rehab rehabilitation. Okay. Disability theories point out that disability is produced as much by cultural and environmental factors as by bodily conditions. This emphasis on social constructions are similar to those supported by post-structuralist feminism. So disability theories, they want to focus not, not on the medical part of disability. They don't want to focus on physical impairment. They want to focus on how society treats um, people who are disabled. Uh, so, this is their uh, idea. They want to socially construct, deconstruct. They, they don't want to construct it. They want to deconstruct, destroy society's biasness and uh, stigmatizing of disabled people. In their fight, for equal rights and activism, disabled, disempowered groups have stressed attention away from material bodies to unjust ways society treats them. In claiming disability, Similinton wrote a manifesto on the benefits of using the social model. Similinton is also somebody who has, is disabled. So she wrote a manifesto on uh, the benefits of using the social model of disability. First, it allows people to find a group identity despite their many differences. Uh, because all people have many disabilities, but they can group themselves in one group. It does this by refusing medicalization of disability, Clinton writes, and arguing that it is the social and political circumstances that have forged us as a group. It presented disabled people as holders of rights. It allowed them to achieve victories at court for better access, inclusion, and protection from discrimination. So uh, it is fighting, this group is fighting for rights, you know, uh, especially at court, for better access, inclusion, and protection from discrimination. If they are fired because they are disabled, you know, if somebody found that they um, do not have one eye, okay? So they can they can sue yeah, the uh, employer who fires them, okay? Or if they are hurt uh, while they are working, yeah, and they lose their job, and it has nothing. The job has nothing to do with their disability. They can still perform their jobs. So they can sue the employer if the employer decides to terminate them. So disability as social and biological construct. Other studies such as by Sharon Snyder and David Mitchell advocated for a culture model of disability that explores disabled people's bodies interacting with societies around them. Tobin Sieber's theory of complex embodiment positioned disability as the product of both the environment and bodily factors as chronic pain, secondary health effects and aging. Okay, so uh, the 
uh, Sharon Snyder and David Mitchell, uh, they they advocated for a culture model of disability, and um, you know to show how disabled people can interact with societies around them. Okay, so Toby Siebert also. Um, also say that disability is a product of both environment and bodily factors okay uh, it's not just uh, the disability that we understand like you cannot see you cannot hear and so on it can also include people who have chronic pain chronic pain means um, chronic means everlasting pain huh? forever uh, is a, a long lasting pain huh? like uh, myself I have arthritis okay I cannot walk properly with Okay, like other people because I have osteoarthritis, so I have also chronic pain. I am I'm disabled in that sense. So secondary health effects like if you have diabetes, so you know it causes a certain disability also and aging. So CBS is including all of these types of disabilities. So what these critics are calling for is the field and policy makers, it's for the field and policy makers to embrace an understanding of disability that includes biological as well as cultural aspects. Um, so you have to understand that disability is not just biological, it can be uh, even something that you cannot see, even something that is related to your culture, you know, because some people can culture discriminate against uh, disabled people. So uh, what other people, what uh, these critics want to, to show to other people is that disability is both biological and cultural or, and social as well. So the American Disabilities Act of uh, 1990 defines disability as not just a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities or record of such impairment. It's not just a um, physical or mental imp uh, impairment, it is more than that. So the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities says that disability results from the interaction between persons with impairments and attitudinal and environmental barriers that hinders their full and active participation in society on an equal basis with others. Uh, so disability results from the interaction between persons and this causes some kind of uh, impairment. No, no, sorry, some kind of barrier eh, that hinders their full and active participation. So it's more than biological, it's when you treat people differently, uh, that you do not allow them, disabled people, when you do not allow them to participate fully in society, then you are causing the disability to happen. Okay, for example, if um, um, uh, a blind person, like uh, I know a blind lecturer yeah, in UAE. He used to work in UAE. Even though he's blind, he can teach. Okay, He can teach uh, classes. He can read Braille. He can teach like anyone else, like any other lecturers. Okay, he, was not, he wasn't 100% like other lecturers because he was blind. But he can teach and he can um, grade people and so on. Okay, so um, the university wasn't big. Uh, wasn't causing any discrimination to this person because this person is able to teach in a university like other lecturers. But if the university is uh, saying that he 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 has he's paid less, for example, so uh, or he he cannot be hired because he is he cannot see, then the university is causing the problem. Yeah? The university is uh, causing the disability to appear as a problem because the university is saying that blind people cannot teach okay so the movement critical disability movement they want to uh, fight this discrimination against blind people huh? um, because they say that blind people can also do whatever normal people do so limitations of CDS, like other theories, it has limitations. Uh, one, because of the stigma surrounding disability, cultures around the world often equate disability with being broken and disqualified. Some people who are disabled are uncomfortable with accepting the disabled able. So because of the stigma yeah, around surrounding disability, uh, like they are inferior, people view them as being inferior. Some disabled people try to hide their disability. 
some pe pe deaf people for you who use sign language that view themselves as being members of a proud linguistic minority and not disabled in many any way. So some people like deaf people they are saying that they're not disabled. Huh? They are okay. They can use uh, sign language. Similarly, some little people in the dwarf community do not view themselves as being disabled, and those who have suddenly become disabled are unhappy with the disability lab label. Um, CDS like social model. Like the social model contains a strong normative dimension that implies what is wrong or wrong, uh, right or wrong, as regards to social arrangement. But it is not concerned with the clear normative approach to the lived, embodied, and discarded experiences of having an impairment. Uh, it is more like um, see, they are concerned with how society treats uh, disabled people, but they are not concerned with how disabled people live them their lives, you know, they are not concerned uh, with the different experiences about having disabilities and so on. But they are more interested in how society uh, views disabled people. So this is the, what do you call that, the limitation. CDS also fails to account for the economic basis of disability. The advantage, disadvantage related to disability is to get a great extent a matter of economic injustice. And before this injustice can be corrected, we have to be fully able to identify those individuals and social groups that have been disadvantaged by social arrangements. Uh, for example, you need to identify the numerous categories of being disadvantaged. For example, a person who's dyslexic yeah, uh, could easily find a job that someone than someone who is blind. So uh, if someone is who has dyslexic, yeah, he is uh, disabled because he cannot see uh, properly and the words on um, on a page of book, for example, but uh, he can get a job, huh? get a high paying job. So sometimes the CDS, they don't really focus on this economic problems by disabled people huh? and they need to focus on them. Why certain, how a blind person, for example, can get equal, uh, a good job, huh? uh, as high paying as the, the one with the dyslexic. Okay. And uh, they don't focus on actors, for example, uh, who are paid less. Uh, disabled people, sometimes they are paid less than able people. Uh, so this is uh, a problem. Uh, but CDS doesn't cover this. So CDS in literature, um, in Mice and Man, which is a novel by John Steinbeck, we have a character, Lenny, who has learning difficulties uh, and he exhibits many characteristics of autism. But the, the novel doesn't say that he's autistic. Uh, he is simply depicting Lenny as being uh, a bit unhuman because he has monstrous strength. In the novel, he's shown to be able to crush somebody to death. No? In fact, he did that. Uh, he crushed a woman who was like an attention-seeking woman. Uh, the woman actually wants the attention of men. Um, and then she already has a lover, but she wants more attention from other men. So she, uh, she befriends Lenny um, because other men are afraid to go near her because she is already married. No? She already has a husband. Uh, but Lenny is uh, somebody who is mentally impaired and perhaps he has autism. Okay, but never, not, the novel was, uh, you know, he didn't, it didn't really elaborate on this, but from critics view, the novel seemed to imply that uh, Lenny, the character, has autism. So Lenny uh, once uh, hugged her at the end of the book, he, he hugged her, and this causes her brains, uh, the, her bones to break, you know, because he was, he, he was a very strong man. Huh? So he hugged her and uh, he killed her. So. The study asks if Lenny is a monster, what does the mean that mean for people's understanding of autism and intellectual care? So th this is a study on Lenny, which is done by a person called Claire Lawrence. Okay. So um she, he looks at uh, the critics look at how Lenny uh is treated like a monster in the book, even though he has a disability. Huh? Um and then it is also looking at the time frame in which the novel is written, which is during the eugenics movement. The eugenics movement is a, a movement concentrated on um, creating a pure society, P-U-R-E. They wanted to get rid of people who are disabled. 
uh, because they say that these people are unfit to live in a, a society that is uh, going to progress to become better. So um, they wanted the eugenic movement wanted society to produce uh, biologically better people, uh, better generations, and so on. So uh, Lenny was shown to be unfit for society because he can kill easily. Uh, even though we know that uh, autistic people cannot do that, they, they cannot. They, they're like normal people. Huh? They, they can uh, have uh, what do you call that? Uh, great strength. They can be very strong because they are men. Huh? But uh, not uh, autistic people are not normally uh, murderers. Okay, but the novel pointed out that Melanie could murder. I did murder some uh, another character. So another. Um, this uh, a study on disability, another study on disability that you can find on the website here, yeah, 19th century disability, uh, is Quasimodo and uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, who is disabled, yes, he's Hunchback, and uh, the narrator blames Quasimodo mis misery on his non-normative body, okay, uh, because he looks different from people, so he is blamed for that, uh, the body is blamed for that, not other people, not the way society treats him. It's because of uh, the way his body itself is repugnant, uh, it's horrible to look at. That's the reason why he is being um, uh, of discriminated in society. So, um, so the in the, the novel itself, yeah, by Victor Hugo, it's written by Victor Hugo, a French novelist. And he is shown, this Cosimodo is shown to be treated uh, in some passages by uh, society because of the, his ugly face. Huh? And, um, they find it grotesque. And at other times, um, and he is also um, how uh, it's also being admired by certain people because he has rescued Esmeralda from execution by the king's men. And uh, he's admired because he is disabled and yet he can perform a heroic deed. So the thing is, um, the treat, how we treat uh, disabled people uh, can actually change from uh, being repugnant towards them and also from, to admiring them. Yeah? So this shows how uh, disability itself is socially constructed. This how we view disabled people that matters. Yeah? Uh, it's not the disability itself that matters. So then we have uh, a list of references here. Now I want to ask if anyone here has any question to ask. Does anyone here has any question to ask? Nur Adila, Nur Adila, Kamara Rahman, do you have any question? The only no. one, uh, the only piece I can see here. Do you have any question? Um, no. no. Okay. Any anyone has any question? How about you, Atika Yakub? Okay, uh, I think somebody wrote something here. Yeah? Oh, no, doctor, okay. Anyone here? It, it's very interesting uh, study because you always think about disability um, as something that is, uh, I don't know, I, I don't, it, it's not really, it, that does not really exist in our mainstream life because most people are not blind, they're not, they're not deaf. You need normal people, but disability actually exists even though we deny it. Okay, uh, because some of us, if you look at the definition for disability, you have you have chronic pain. If you are have uh, diabetes, for example, and you are considered disabled. You are not fully able. And uh, and we know everyone, and we know a lot of people who have this disease, right? Yeah. So in a sense, they are disabled also. Disability is within our families, you know? but we cannot. We try to deny it. Um, and then, okay, does someone see anything here? Yeah? Okay, not for now. Okay. So we well, know we also. Um, sometimes we discriminate by not 
kind to be sympathetic to disabled people. I saw a few weeks ago uh, a documentary from in RTM. It was about a lecturer in UKM who studies disability studies, and she was disabled herself, and uh, she got a degree. Her first degree was actually from UIA. She went to the UIA Matriculation Center. At that time, it was called Matriculation Center. And uh, right now, it's called a Center for Fundamental Studies. Um, at that time, she said that she had cancer before she went to UIA. And she, she cannot walk properly because they had to cut her leg. Okay? Her feet had to be cut amputated okay so uh, she met with a lot of problems because uh, other students refuse to help her they, they don't want to help her they, they think that she is a problem and I, I think i've met many people who are kind in uh, many students who are kind who help other people but they are apparently you know uh, some students because they live together with this disabled person eh? they, they live in a dorm for example together with disabled person because they they, they cannot help her every day eh? Um, so they say that, you know, uh, you are causing a lot of problems, you should go back, don't study here in UIA anymore. So, so she felt very inferior in that sense. So this is a problem sometimes um, that we have with uh, people, they cannot um, stand helping, they, they cannot help consistently people who are disabled because they view them as a problem. Yeah. So. Um, so this is this kind of attitude actually has to change because uh, we have to make life easier for disabled people. In the West, uh, a lot of people, um, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but disability is quite common sometimes. I think, I think it's more common than in Malaysia because sometimes um, young people, for example, they get into accidents and they lose uh, their legs, you know. Um, they lose, they become disabled. So you can see that around campus. Um, and other, they have friends who help them, who help them get around, things like that. So, they, you know, they are more tolerant, I think, of disability than us in that sense. And you all know, you know, you don't know when you are, you can become disabled, right? Yeah. So you may have also diabetes, you may develop diabetes, you may have developed, uh, you may get into an accident. Yeah, in the future, so we 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 don't we cannot think of ourselves as being able all the time uh, and forever until we die. Maybe there will be a time when we become disabled, and then uh, we have to face the consequences when people look down on us and so on. Okay, so basically, any kind of disadvantage can be considered a disability. Yes, if you are a Mira Faika, if you are uh, unable to do certain things, then you can say that you are disabled, right? You, you, you know, if you, you have uh, high blood pressure and it's causing you uh, to experience other forms of uh, disability, for example, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, perform um, a certain task, or you cannot, uh, you become weak on certain days and so on, you know, this is a form of disability. So what the study is pointing out here yeah, is disability exists even for normal looking people. Yeah. So, you know, if um, also if you're doing a video on this, yeah, if you have any questions also you can have, you can ask me questions on the video because I would like to have everything done by this week. Because at least sixty percent, right? Our exam is forty percent. Uh, so final exam is forty percent, and you're given like five hours to sit for it. Huh? Um, but the other sixty come from our blog, our your blog and your video, okay, and the quizzes. Okay, so quiz I will give you two more quizzes uh, by Google form, because the last time I gave you by. Um, Italian, there were so many problems because people kept going back to me and then say that you cannot uh, access Italian. So I'll give my Google form, but later I will give you the, I will give you some time to answer it. Okay, quite some time, a um, few days. Huh? Um, so by, I'll give you the form and you can then join us, join, write the form, reply to the form. Okay, I'll give you the link to the form. So, anyone has any question to ask? Mm 
um, doctor. Uh, there's this stigma, I guess, around people who once had uh, one infected by COVID-19, but they recovered. Yeah. However, uh, there are stigmas surrounding them that people don't want to be even near them. Um, so this can also be considered as disability, right? Or not? It is difficult to answer that one because uh, what is the disability of a person who had previously been infected with uh, COVID-19? Is there any particular disability connected with that? I guess they would be, we couldn't say that they have disability, but when society themselves distance, um, distance themselves from these people who was infected by coronavirus, then are not, they are also disabled by a certain degree. Probably they can't really function as um, a normal member of society. If the society you know, doesn't treat them as normal anymore, I guess. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, if it, if it causes them some kind of physical disability, then yeah, it is addressed to them too. Um, this is the the you know the the thing with uh, our government and also governments around the world because OKU, for example, orang kelainan upaya, right? Or disabled people, they are given cards uh, related to disability, and but normal people like those who patients who are COVID nineteen, perhaps they they still suffer the side effects of uh, the virus, yeah, ex patients, former patients, and um. Also, people who are like myself, I have severe arthritis, you know, but we don't have any cut of EQ. So, um, so, you know, there is uh, no formal acceptance of us as being disabled. It's just that you have to be formally disabled, you know, in order to get the OKU special treatment from uh, the government. Yeah. So, if you have OKU, uh, card, you don't have to pay for your medical expenses in government hospitals. You can go for free. Yeah? So you can get treatment for free. But uh, people like myself, you know, when we have uh, also arthritis, we have uh, maybe some people who have COVID-19, they, they, they cannot go for free. They have to pay. So the point of CDS is actually to, to say that all these people are disabled, not just people who are, you can visually be seen as being disabled or clinically proven to be disabled. No? So yes, no. it, it, it can talk about that if they are disabled, uh, the theory, yeah? if they are being stigmatized by society also. I have, yeah. So maybe in the future, there will be people who can uh, write novels about people who are being stigmatized because they have uh, uh, been uh, infected with certain viruses. Uh, so it is uh, something new also in our society about COVID-19. Previously, we had H1N1, uh, but H1N1 was uh, curable because it had a medicine. Remember in 2009? Uh, around 2009-2010, we had H1N1 in Malaysia, the infection, and some people died, but not many people right now. Uh, around 800, I think, they were white. Huh? Um, but now we have we are seeing you know, hundreds of thousands, like, hundreds of thousands. Okay, so it's def definitely more deadly than uh, H1N1. H1N1 also had a medicine for it. That was, uh, uh, they will give you some kind of generic medicine. So, anyone, anyone else wants to say anything? Do you understand how to apply the uh, CDS to a study? Uh, it's more related to social, social treatment, how people treat disabled people in uh, literature. Dr. Neti also, Dr. Neti Mata, he wrote a thesis on uh, disability. Oh, okay, so she's a very good person if you want to uh, ask something on, on this theory. So, nobody else wants to ask anything? Okay, nobody? Yeah, okay, I'll then 
uh, I, I will see you on Thursday then, right? Okay. So thank you for following this class. I'm really sorry again for um, the problem, the slight problem that I had with the timing. Okay. So thank you, and I will see you on Thursday. Please do the blog. Please do the blog, and then also do.